We so love you. years ago, Forrest years. and I went, had an f- incredibly fun time in Vietnam looking for the possibly extinct, possibly not Asian unicorn. The Asian. Saula. The Saula. Kyle, can Saula. you pull up a picture of a Saula? Uh, I believe there's, what, there's one known there's, there's in there's I believe that's no, an abalone. Three. There's okay. three. Yeah. Three or four. So why do they, um, okay. they call it the, is they call it the unicorn? Cause it doesn't have one horn, but it's a, it's a large bovid type. What is, I mean, it looks like a giant deer kind of deer yeah. with it's two so, long it's horns. Got, it got a face kind of of a, uh, Gabby Wampus. What are those things called? Come on. Those things that are on the island that are taken over again. They're the little cute animals. Wombat? Nutria? Uh, no, no. Come on. They're like... Uh, a I, quokka? Uh, Gabby Wampus. I think Gabby Wampus. I, I think Gabby Wampus was a gymnast. Literally nobody knows what you're ah, talking about. It's going to drive me insane. <laughs> they have the cute face that looks like this. Uh, it's Dick Dick? Col- no. No, no. It's called a unicorn because a couple things. One, it was so rare... That people didn't think it existed like a unicorn. Yeah. It's the largest, uh, most recently described bovid in the world. Bovid being cattle family. And the real reason, the primary reason it's called the Asian unicorn is its horns are so symmetrical that when looking at it from a side profile, it looks as though it has one horn. You can kind of see it there. Oh, but it. if it were a pure profile, it, the horns are so perfectly symmetrical that it looks like a unicorn. Yeah. So beautiful. Very Crazy creature there. I mean, we can get into it, talk about Bill Robichaud's story, but no fear of human beings, super peaceful, really interesting animals. Kyle, yeah. figure this out for me. It's the animal that's mixing in with tourists now on the popular island. It's coming back. I, I, it'll drive me insane. I can't focus. You gave no detail. I just told you. The popular island? What is Hawaii? the popular no, no, island? It's, it was a big news story. We talked about it on the pod. It's like a short ca- capybara. Capybara. There's no island. <laughs> Whatever, it's a it's a touristy <laughs> area. <laughs> so Gabby Wampus is pretty close though. <laughs> is super Gabby close. <laughs> we went all around the Anamite Mountains looking for this. Didn't find one. No, nope. find anything. Sadly. So what's what why is the cell in the news? Uh let's take a look here. I actually haven't seen this story, so this is exciting for me. It's good that he, that Pat asked you then, yeah. since you haven't seen it. <laughs> So it says genetics may save the rare elusive Sala if it's not already extinct. So researchers created the first complete Sala genome using DNA from 26 hunting trophies found throughout the Anamite Mountains. So Mm. similar to what we've talked about before with Colossal and the thylacine and the mammoth, there is this new frontier of genetic engineering, of genome sequencing, where people are going out and it's, it's like... It's kind of like, remember when, when the dot-com bubble or era, the Silicon Valley era came about? It's like, who can create an app the fastest? You know, who's mm-hmm. going to make the best app? And that person will undeniably be a millionaire, a billionaire, right. whatever. Like, like, that was the same thing that happened in Silicon Valley, right? Sure. That's what's happening right now in genetics, genome sequencing, de-extinction technology. Yeah. Like, Colossal's definitely the Microsoft or the Apple or whatever. They're the big dog. But then there are all these other various little groups, some out of China, some out of Russia, some others out of the United States that are like race to get these things. So what are the rarest? What are the coolest? What are these things that we can get samples of? And what are the access we have? So whatever group this is, maybe it says in the article, they've managed to secure 26 samples. And so for clarity, for those that don't understand, if you just take one sample, like if I just take a Patrick DeLuca sample... It's going to be, and it's old and it's degraded, like you died 50 years right, ago. Right. There's going to be a lot of holes in it. But if there's a Pat sample and a Peter sample and a Forrest sample, well, now we can average those three things out, right? Well, we don't know how tall Pat was, but we know between the three of them, they average 5'11". Or, well, I'm making these things up, right? Yeah. We know between the three of them, they had blue eyes, like whatever. So it fills these holes in to then be able yep. to complete a... a a full sequence of full genome. So gotcha. that's why you need all these samples. You can't just take one because one will be so massively degraded that you can't just build it back up. So there's these races going on. It's like twofold is what I'm saying. There's this race to get all this data and these samples and this race to de-extinct things. And you have to have the technology, the access, and then enough samples to bring it all together. So it's, it's pretty it's exciting. It's interesting that they were able to find 26, they call them hunting trophies. I'm assuming it was heads that hunters had. Skull, know, they, a lot of skulls. Yeah. Skulls and yeah. stuff that hadn't, you know, whatever they didn't eat. Um, I don't think 
we were looking all over to try and find a Saula skull. None. And some of those like little but, villages and stuff. We but remember, we found that guy with the Raffida skull in Vietnam. That's right. And those hunters keep those kinds of trophies, you know, yeah. when they catch something super rare. They don't have taxidermy and stuff like that easily accessible. So instead, they just boil and dry the skull and then they keep the, the bones of the skull. Mm -hmm. And this was crazy, Peter. We got this Raffidus. Raffidus is a giant soft shell turtle skull that was like this big. Mm. And this guy showed us the like homemade long line that he caught us caught it on with all the hooks and barbs and stuff. Crazy. Um, so yeah, so I guess let's see. So they worked with the Sala Foundation, which there's now two of them. There's a Sala working group and the Sala Foundation. I think the Sala Foundation is Bill Robichaud's, who we we worked with. No, I we think. were no Sala working group. We so. were Sala working group. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can't remember anymore. But yeah. So they worked with one of these two main main groups and obviously went and found all the samples. Now, these guys have been working on this tirelessly since like 2013, yeah. trying to find skulls and samples and things. So they have all the records of where everything is. Kyle, pull up pictures of the Anamite Mountains. So like I, I knew nothing of this mountain range. Mm. It's fucking crazy. It's huge and super wild and stretches all the way from Vietnam to Laos. Wow. And um. There's, t you know, Very, wild, wild huge. tigers there. Holy crap. Really? Pull up that picture with the river. Yeah, man. And it's just full of caves that like massive caves. Like the biggest cave in the world is there. Oh, is that that's the one now? That yeah. You guys went, that's the one we went in, but Hong but, Dong? but you know, Song we, were, Song Dung. we were talking to some of the, the local, you know, the guy who discovered Song Dung cave. And he's like, yeah, there's a big, there's a bigger cave system that I've already found. Mm. Yeah, that wow. nobody knows Crazy. about yet. Really? And remember, yeah, this place is like truly wild, and, That's and crazy. unexplored by outsiders. Remember, we uh, we heard the whole story about how they found the entrance to Song Dung, and then the guy's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take you back there. And then it took him like twelve years to find it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I think Pretty I remember crazy. you mentioned that. Yeah. So uh, the, if 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 the say Sciola, say it again. So close. But dude, one other last Sour. thing about the Anamites too. Like you'd be hiking around mm -hmm. in this and it's, you know, you're fucking covered in leeches. It's, you're like, there's just water. There's water buffalo, right? Oh yeah. Everywhere. Just wild water buffalo yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But then you just like see like a bomb the size of this oh table just sticking out of the ground. Yeah. That's it didn't wild. Detonate. Pretty nuts. Just yeah, like full crazy. of just bombs from the war. There's uh, also uh, is so tragic and bad, man. Just destroying oh, lands. It's wild, dude. It's crazy. Also, our best bro picture of all time came from the animals. That's right. Yeah, I just sent it to Kyle. <laughs> it's real nice. Oh yeah, this was uh, Pat's like Facebook or Instagram profile a, for like ten years. It's a I, good bro pic. I believe I posted it on Instagram because I wanted it for my dating profile. Ah, yeah. nice. Smart. It's a good you know, one. Yeah. Yeah. I I was like, yeah, my beard's looking pretty good. I was, yeah, I was yeah. working out real hard at You're the time. You're in good shape. Yeah. yeah. Still Standing yeah. next to an absolute stud. Mm. Yeah, a couple Fa of handsome face fellas. is still a little bit chubby, though. It always shall be. 